welcome back welcome to a new video and to another wonderful product of nature the product we were going to be talking about today dates back to about 13,000 years BC now in ancient Greece it was a preferred food item for low-income communities whereas in Egypt it was fed to royalty but the unique thing about this food item is its contribution to the planet's sustainability. Let's talk about lentils. Lentils are pulse seeds, or what we know as legumes. They originate from the East Mediterranean and specifically from Greece and Syria. Those were the two places that, where they were first found. Of course, today they are planted in many, many places and they come in different breeds and different countries plant different breeds. Lentils is a small crop that has pods. And in those pods are the lentils. Every pod usually has about one to two and sometimes even three lentils. Today, of course, with modern uh, agriculture, machinery comes into the fields and automatically separates the lentils from the rest of the plant. Now, spring is the time to plant the lentils and they are harvested in August. The unique thing about lentils is their contribution to the sustainability of the environment of the planet. We all know, for example, that all the crops, everything that is a product of nature is by definition sustainable. I mean, it, nature creates it so nature can absorb it back. But with lentils, lentils seem to do a, an extra effort to take a few more steps to help in the sustainability of the environment. So what do lentils do? First of all, when lentils are harvested, as we said, machinery goes in, separates the seeds from the crop, but the crop is then shredded and put onto the field used as fertilizer, so nothing goes to waste. The second thing is that lentils have this unique ability to absorb nitrogen from the environment and pour it into the soil. So it enriches the soil with nitrogen. As a crop itself, it's not a high nitrogen food item, but it enriches the soil with nitrogen as if it's preparing the soil for the next crop or telling us which crop needs to be planted next. And we know when we spoke about onions that nitrogen is very important for the growth of onions. So after lentils, onions would be a good choice. Something else is the carbon. Lentils emit more carbon into the soil than they emit into the atmosphere. So somehow they, they sort of um, add to the good balance of carbon-oxygen, apparently, to the atmosphere. Also, lentils don't depend a lot on irrigation, so they can do very well during drought, so they don't need a lot of water. And the last thing is that they don't have very deep roots. Lentils are about, you know, they're crops that are barely a foot, you know, that's way less than a meter tall, uh, and they don't have uh, deep roots, which means that more or less they don't sort of mess up the soil too much. So they are delicate and a very considerate crop. So let's take a closer look at lentils. Lentils come in different colors. The main colors are like three, four colors. Now these are the red lentils. Sometimes they even come in, in split red lentils. These are the most known lentils, which are the green lentils, and they come in different sizes as well. These are the yellow, and these are split lentils, or crushed lentils. And there's also the black, which I don't have here. The colors may range, I mean, it may be from light red to dark red, orangey, 
It may be from dark green to light green. The ones that don't hold very well are the red and the yellow. The ones that hold better are the green and the black. The black are also called the caviar lentils, are the ones that hold the best. The green, which are the, the most, I call them regular lentils, or they're also called French lentils, they do keep their shapes. Lentils cook very easily. Now over here I have the green lentils, and these are the cooked green lentils. They, um, their husk sort of uh, gets a little bit wrinkled. Now these are the red, and then when they cook, this is how they look like. They become yellow and they're sort of mushy. They completely lose their, um, their shape, but they're very tasty and actually red lentils make very good soup. And these are the uh, yellow ones. In ancient times, uh, lentils were used to make soups, bread, and types of porridge. And actually today things are not that different because what we use lentils in is also soups. We can make different muffins and breads that include um, lentils. And the porridge that people used to make in ancient times, today we can say that we can mush the lentils and add it into the different soups and sauces as a thickener. So more or less its use has been quite steady throughout the ages. All right, so what about its nutritional value? How good are lentils for us? Lentils are very, very beneficial, and actually the entire group of legumes are quite beneficial for our health. Lentils specifically contain folate, potassium, magnesium, selenium, I mean, they have fiber. Selenium is great for the thyroid. Magnesium does a lot of good for nerves and muscles. Potassium for um, blood pressure. Uh, folate for the uh, formation of red blood cells. But of course, the main thing about lentils, which most of us probably know, is that they are a very good source of protein and a very good source of iron. Regarding iron, 100 grams of meat can give us about 1.5 milligrams of iron. But 100 grams of lentils would give us 3.3 milligrams of iron. Now the difference is the iron which is from meat source is readily absorbed. But the iron which is from plant source is not readily absorbed. But that's absolutely no problem because this is very easily solved with the addition of an acidic content acid like vitamin C. So we can add some um, lemon juice, we can add some vinegar, we can add beta carotene which is found in carrots and carrots go very well with lentils. So that's absolutely no problem because more than 60 to 70 percent increase of absorption of iron is registered with the addition of some lemon or some vinegar. Another very interesting thing is that sulfur increases the absorption of iron. And guess where sulfur exists most? In onions and garlic. Always try to add some garlic and some onion. It, the taste blends so well and it helps so much in the absorption of the nutrients. The same thing, of course, goes with the absorption of zinc. Regarding the protein, protein in lentils and legumes compared to protein in meat is almost the same. It's very high quality protein. So how can we readily and easily include lentils in our diet? Now lentils are very, very easy to cook. All you have to do is just boil them. And you boil them with the addition of a little bit of salt. Now some people like to, to boil it by putting 
three to one, three measures of water to one measure of lentils. And when all the water is absorbed by the lentils, they are usually cooked. So you taste them. Others like to just put more water and let them boil and then they strain them. And that's absolutely fine. And they're ready to eat. Now, one thing that I wanted to show you here is a wonderful, wonderful and very easy salad to make. Now, these took about 25 minutes to boil, okay? Uh, other varieties may take even less. I like to add mushrooms, just two or ingredients and that's it. And the best mushrooms that I found that really go so well with this salad are canned sliced. They go very well with the texture and they go very well with the, um, the size, the bite size. An interesting thing, remember, we said that we need to add something uh, of an acid. Pickle goes here and the best pickle that matches this salad is onion pickle. So I'm going to have, now I prepared these yesterday and if you go to the video about onions, you're going to find how to make pickled onions, which takes about three to four minutes. That's all. So you can have it done a day before and then use it. Oh, the smell of the pickled onion is incredible. Now I have the link to the onion video at the, at the end of this video. So you can watch that and see how to make the onion pickles. If you don't have onion pickles, you don't want to make onion pickles, you can just add dill, but I'm telling you, the onion adds so much, and as we said, it also helps in the absorption of iron, because the sulfur in the onion helps the absorption of iron. Now, we can add here, I like to add about, you know, just a, a couple of tablespoons of vinegar. It's wonderful. Ah. I'm sure it tastes like every time I've done this many, many times, as you can imagine, as you can guess. And if I taste this here, this is a too big of a spoon. Mmm. I strongly recommend the pickled onion. It is amazing. It goes so well with this salad. That's it. After you boil the lentils, it takes about a minute to make the salad. And it is so good. You can puree lentils and add them as thickeners in soups and sauces. And you can do so many recipes with it, but this is a really easy recipe. If you include them about twice a week, then that would be wonderful. And when we say to include them in the diet, of course, again, I don't mean just a tablespoon of legumes in a salad, but a portion. That's when you're going to get its benefits. A cup of lentils would give us about 230 kilocalories. And that is a fairly low calorie portion for a meal. So what's to remember about lentils? Lentils, first of all, are a very affordable food item. It's very easy to keep. You just buy it and you put it in the pantry. That's all it takes. It's very, very nutritious. It's very, very easy to cook. You just boil it and then you can use it in a recipe or just make a simple salad out of it. Remember that one cup of lentils provide one third of the daily requirements of protein and more than one third of our daily requirements of iron. Don't forget about its contribution to the sustainability of the planet. So yes, please do include lentils and in general legumes in your diet so if you include them about twice a week, then that would be wonderful. Because remember, the closer we are to nature, the healthier we are. This is the end of this video. If you like the content, then please click the subscribe button so that you can be notified of every new video that comes out. 
Join us in the Facebook group for comments and discussions. Look for us in Pinterest and Instagram for some beautiful photos of each product. Thank you and see you next time.